Hi everybody, my name is Dave Marsh and I'd like to welcome you to this Matrix version 6.3 input tutorial. Now before we begin, I'd like to mention that because each MLS has slightly different requirements, the system that we'll be using during this tutorial may differ slightly from the one that you're currently working with. Nevertheless, the functionality is the same and for the most part, whatever you see during this tutorial, you'll easily recognize in your own system. Now I'm going to take for granted that everyone knows how to log into the system, so we'll start by inserting our user ID and our password, then click login to begin. Now because this is a matrix input tutorial, I'm going to click on the input tab. Alright, so this is ultimately where you'll decide to either create a brand new listing or to edit an existing one. Let's start by creating a new listing, and we'll do this by clicking on the add new link. All right, from here, simply choose what type of listing you'd like to add, and for this tutorial, we're going to create a new residential listing. Okay, there are three ways to create a brand new listing within Matrix. We can choose to either fill from tax records, fill from an existing listing, or we can start with a blank slate. If we choose to fill from an existing listing, we can either retrieve the listing with an MLS number, or we can choose to do a search for it. But for this tutorial, we're going to start with a completely blank listing. So let's click on the blank listing link, and this takes us to an area where we'll insert all the listing details using a very simple step-by-step -step input wizard. Now as part of this process, you're asked to decide whether the status of this listing is incoming or active. And what this means is, if you'd like to start the listing but not yet make it visible to the public on the MLS, perhaps because it's incomplete, you'd want to choose Incoming. If on the other hand you have all the information available to make your listing comply with the input rules, you can make it public immediately by choosing Active. For this tutorial, I'm going to create an incoming or an incomplete listing, and then later I'm going to edit it by making the listing active for all to see on the MLS. Okay, so in these next sections, we're asked to add some required and some optional information based on the input field's color. But for this tutorial, I'm not going to focus too closely on each and every field, but one thing that I would like to highlight is how to map a listing. And we'll do this by simply adding the properties address, and then clicking on the get latitude and longitude from address link. And an interesting thing to note here is, to ensure that your listing shows up accurately on all map searches, you'll need to verify that the push pin is properly located. To do this, simply select the Get Latitude and Longitude manually link, zoom in, then click wherever you'd like the new marker to appear. To set the Google Street View, click the Google Street View link, then drag the image to exactly how you'd like the property to display. Alright, once complete, we can now continue to fill out any required information according to our status. And remember, if at any point you'd like to change the listing to active, simply switch the status from incoming, and you can continue to populate your required fields. But again, we're not going to finish this listing at the moment, so I'm just going to submit it as incomplete and come back to the form data later. All right, so now that the save has succeeded, we're able to add any additional photos and supplements to the listing. And we'll do this by first navigating to where we store the images on our hard drive, and then adding each of them individually or all together to the listing. All right, with our images uploaded, let's make this the primary photo by dragging and dropping the picture to its new primary position. We can also choose to add an optional description to each of the pictures simply by selecting the image, adding our text, then clicking on Done when we're finished. All right, with our photos complete, click Save, and we're ready to add any listing supplements. For this example, I'm going to add a floor plan, and I'm simply going to call it Floor Plans. So let's browse for the file on my hard drive, click Upload, and finally I'm going to click on Save. And that's it. I've now added an incoming listing that's only visible to me. 
All right, so now let's assume that I want to edit this incomplete listing. Perhaps there's some additional information that I'd like to include, or maybe I just want to finish adding all the required fields and update the status to active. Either way, to do this, first click on the Input tab, then enter an MLS number into the text box, select the listing that you'd like to modify from the drop-down list, or you can click on the Edit Existing link to do a search. From here, let's enter the MLS number of the listing that I'd like to modify. And we see that we have a variety of editing options to choose from. Now we've already added some photos and supplements to our partial listing, so let's just click on our input form, update the status to active, now let's quickly finish filling out all the required fields, and now let's click Submit. All right, at this point, if you see any error icons indicated on your page, it means that you haven't entered the required information. To correct this, you'll need to navigate to where the error icons are displayed and resolve the issues before you're able to submit your listing. All right, with all the required fields now complete, click the Submit button, and your active listing is now live on the MLS. Well, that concludes our listing input tutorial. I'd like to thank you for watching and hope that you can join me for another session. Take care.